the dust. After film school, I planned to make feature films and I fell into television. I thought, okay, maybe I'll do this for a year or two. And then time went by. I think also in some ways I was maybe fearful of making my first film. There was just a point where I cracked and I thought I can't do this anymore. And Unrelated came out of this spirit of wanting to show something of myself in my work. All my films have been inspired initially by a place that I know. With Unrelated, it was a place in Italy that I knew, and the idea of the family came out, came out of this place. The place came first, and then with Archipelago, it was the same thing. It was an island I'd been to as a child. I get very attached to places, and they get un under my skin in a particular way. Go ahead. Ah. Ah. Go after that lunch. And again, exhibition was the love of a house that some friends were living in. And then with the souvenir, it was more of a challenge because there was no place. It was a place in my past. I don't like to say what I do. But I'm lying poison. We can do something to that. So we can read them anyway for weekend and whatever we want, right? So, we can, uh... so how was I going to find this actual object, this place, when it was something in my memory? And what happened is I fell in love with an aircraft hangar in the middle of the Norfolk countryside, and I realised that what was exciting to me about this aircraft hangar is that it could be a container for all my ideas and memories, and we ended up building an apartment that I had in my early 20s, and so we built that within the aircraft hangar. And cut. Cut there. My mise-en-scene is completely inspired by the place, so I can't detach the feelings I have for a place or a house with how I'm going to film it. She's married now or engaged or something, so I'm told. And then I took many photographs in the house and I think it's my way of getting to know somewhere. Um, and it's been the same with all the films. When I write, I'm also taking photographs. With the souvenirs, I used photographs that I'd taken were part of my script document. And then the mise-en-scene comes out of the view I have of these places. I'm a little like a detective, seeking out a story which hasn't revealed itself to me yet. I don't know how to get going. Why am I drawn to this place which is so far away from home and so different? In The Eternal Daughter was different because it wasn't somewhere that I knew already. We shot The Eternal Daughter at the end of 2020. I'd originally come up with the idea or the story in 2008 and I was going to make it, but I wasn't ready to do it then. I wasn't ready to talk about my relationship with my mother. Tilda and I had been discussing the characters for some time and Tilda plays Rosalind in The Souvenir and The Souvenir Part Two. She was a very interesting person who was partly based on my mother, a little bit based on Tilda's mother, ourselves, our relationship. There were many things inside Rosalind. I made the assumption that Tilda would play Julie, the daughter, and that somebody older would play the mother. And uh, Tilda said, what if I play both characters? And as soon as she said that, it just made so much sense. Hmm. It's something very personal, both for Tilda and I. Uh, we've known each other since we, I was 11 until there was 10 when we met at school. We haven't done that much work together, not yet, but the eternal daughter feels like the sort of most important, not, not in terms of scale or anything grand, but important in terms of very personal to both of us, and, and, and so much of us went into the film. 
I feel so bad for bringing you here. That's what rooms do. They, they hold these stories and we're here now.